Welcome everybody to the first offseason in the Rockies franchise on MLB The Show 21. I think we all knew that season one was going to be challenging, but I'm not sure we were all prepared for us to lose 109 games. It was bad from really the very beginning. We won on opening day and it was all downhill from there. We never really had a winning month or made the season interesting as far as winning goes, but now we get to move on from this season and we can look at adding some new players, maybe seeing some development for the high potential players we do have. And then spring training's around the corner and we'll get to see a lot of competition this year. But I think we're all hoping that somehow in the offseason this team can definitively get better. We need pitching help. We need outfield help. This team needs help everywhere. But you still want to attack it the right way. You don't want to sign players that can't really help you when your window opens up as a better team. So I'm thinking about free agents that are either going to be more of a bargain signing or are at least young enough to where three, four years down the road, they're still the same player and not regressing. That's why Trevor Story was traded. I wasn't sure if three, four years from now he'd be the same player. Maybe you could make it work, but got Tuki Toussaint in return. That trade isn't working great for us right now. But let's move on from season one, everybody. Advance to the offseason. It is time. The Dodgers were the champions. I had game seven in the previous episode. And it looks like we're going to have a brand new manager. Bud Black is retiring. It's interesting because I was probably going to end up firing him. I don't know his rating boost in this game, but we're looking at adding a new manager already. Third base coach is retiring. Hitting coach has contract expiring. The offseason is about to begin. You have five days to negotiate contracts with any player who isn't under contract, and then they'll be available for free agency. You also have five days to tender qualifying offers, which we certainly won't be doing. And here are retirements. Ian Desmond, who opted out of 2020 and 2021, he has retired. Jack Wincoop, I was kind of intrigued by him. He had some ratings I wanted to see more over. Maybe I'm thinking of somebody else. He's D potential 63. Maybe I had him confused with somebody else. Rich Hill retires. J. Happ, Kurt Suzuki, Jed Lowry, Ian Kennedy. Not too many high profile retirements here. John Lester, Wade Miley, Adam Wainwright, a few older pitchers, and then some free agents also electing to move on, like a couple hundred of them maybe. I'll do my best to stay caught up on all the Super Chats here. Thank you for all of those. And Albert Pujols inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Uh, Ryan sent a super chat. No message. I appreciate that. And then we have some new members here. Keneal. Hope I'm saying that correctly. Thank you. Nyris. Garrett. A lot of new members here already. Thank you. So here are the main free agents. It's not like the best group of players, but I do want John Gray to stay. I do want Michael Givens to stay. Beyond those two, maybe Chris Owings, because he's kind of the super utility player. It's always good to have one of those on the team. But you could also just see what free agency brings. There might be somebody else that's better. I don't think Owings is going to have the hottest free agent market. So let's make an offer here to John Gray. This is a little more money than I wanted to spend. I want to see our budget quick, just to see what we have to work with. So, 
We have a little bit of space opened up because not many players have big contracts for next year. We have Charlie Blackman, 18 million, Herman Marquez, Scott Oberg, and then it's all going to be uh, like minor league contracts for now. I didn't like do any re-signing in the season. Hey Kawhi, how you doing? Thank you for the super chat. Things are going pretty well. So we have $123 million in budget to spend. Can we handle maybe paying a bit more than I want to for John Gray? Probably. Michael Givens, he's looking for $5 million. I'm open to bringing him back for this, but might even need more. Let's see, a player option here. Will this be accepted? Where's Maxwell Fowler when you need him? Far, far away from here, that's for sure. Let's see, John Gray. We could make a, a front-loaded contract and see if we can make this work. Realistically, Gray is kind of like a third, fourth, maybe fifth pitcher in the rotation. He's had some decent years. This last one, a 3.58 ERA, the whip, 1.3. Not a high war player, though the strikeouts were just way down. Is this worth it front-loading like a three-year deal? Then there's CJ Crone as well. What's he looking for? 2.7. I'm not going to offer it here because I can't be sure that he's even going to start for us next year well you can rebrand the team and make all those changes here that's pretty cool why don't we go and look for a new manager let's see if we can get some new boosts we could bring in Dave Roberts he's just won two World Series Joe Madden why are both managers from the last World Series available Maybe their contracts are just up and they're going to possibly re-sign. Sign younger veterans to team-friendly deals, if possible. Who could help the team be a little better? But also be traded for prospects. Yeah, we'll look for some value signings for sure at some point today. <clears throat> Dave Roberts. Now, this does take away from your team budget. Okay, so Roberts wants 8 million. Joe Madden wants 7.1. It doesn't make a lot of sense for these two World Series managers to all of a sudden come to Colorado for this rebuild. A lot of negative ratings here. Louis Leonard, speed reaction clutch twice. K per nine, stamina. Won't be able to stick around this stream, but I just wanted to drop by and hope for the best for the offseason. Target Corey Seager if he's available. I think I definitely would if he was. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah, home run per nine is one of those key ratings. Strikeout per nine as well. Jeff Bliss. Three home run per nine, two K per nine. $4.1 million. The boost for Dave Roberts is pretty impressive. Same for Joe Madden. Just taking a look at everybody here. I'll give you $20 to sign Tommy Listella. 
I appreciate it, Don. I'm not sure Listella is going to be on my radar. Contacts hitting infielder. I don't know if that's going to fit. So, do we offer to Dave Roberts and just see if we can make it work? We want to rebuild this team. He's just won two World Series. Trade for Marcus Stroman because I went to high school with him. I'd love to have a pitcher like Stroman on this team. I think he'd be a great fit in Coors. A good sinker baller that limits power. He'd be the perfect fit, honestly. Can't tell you how much I've binge watched so many series on the channel. Always wake up hoping for a Kane video. Thank you, Lance. I appreciate that. Glad you're enjoying the content. All right. It would be a little unrealistic to get one of these top managers. So as we work on this rebuild, we can look in a different direction. Anthony Meeks, K per nine, Velo Power is an interesting option here. Not the exact ratings I want, but good ones. Certainly good ones. Um, Louis Leonard, speed reaction, clutch. I'm not sure the ratings blend there is the best. I like Jeff Bliss with the K per nine and home run per nine. Yeah, walks per nine would be good specifically for Tuki Toussaint. I don't think that's really a positive for most coaches, though. I'm not seeing it come up. What all positions have to be filled? A hitting coach? Well, we're going to fire our pitching coach as well. He's making the walk per nine even worse. We have to pay the rest of that contract, but that's an easy choice there. We might be going with almost an entirely new staff. So here are all the potential pitching coaches. K per nine, velo break, that's really good. Home run per nine, strikeout per nine, hit per nine. If I could get walk per nine, that would be nice. Here's one, another option. Stamina wouldn't be bad either. I had no idea how bad our coaching was. Wow, that's interesting, but you lose velocity. I don't know if I want that combo. There's like 400 options, by the way. I'm not going through all of them. <clears throat> so K per nine, home run per nine, stamina, you just lose a little break. Yeah, I'm not dedicated. I can't go through 500 pitching coaches. Why are there so many? <clears throat> Abe Kapler's available. Don't forget better staff equals more interest from free agency. That is a good point. So, what negative are we okay dealing with? A minus three break? Anthony Meeks, minus one clutch, K per nine, Velo, and break. That's not a bad boost either. No negatives here.
I think we're going to offer to Jeff Bliss. That home run per nine is so big in Coors. The break, that's okay to lose a little bit of that. But K per nine and stamina. Let's go with Jeff Bliss. We have also, we have to look for a new hitting coach. So here, I feel like we need a boost for plate vision. Here's the roster. I feel like our plate visions are super low. Diaz has 81, Tapia 77, Charlie Blackman 74, but only a handful of players are even in the 70s. I want to make sure we get somebody that has a little bit of plate vision there. Certainly no negative to plate vision. And that's like all we're seeing. Positives here across the board. What other ratings do you think would be important? <laughs> power. Everybody wants the power. We got to get the long ball going here in Coors for sure. Contact power, clutch, plate discipline. This one's interesting. You get vision, contact, clutch, power. I mean, that's everything. No negatives. We'll make that offer. That's a pretty good one, too. But that two plate vision is nice. Okay. Those two offers I like. Then uh, maybe we just fire everybody. All new staff here. That's what we're going for. First base coach. We have more defensive ratings and base running. Speed, stealing, reaction. I mean, that right there looks pretty good to me, Billy Davis. Arm strength, blocking, durability, and speed. I know the farm director had good plate vision there, but I think we can just start over fresh. Hey Kane, been here since Madden 12 when I was 11 years old. Now I'm 20, first time being able to send a super chat on the stream. Much love. Thank you very much, Anarchy, for the super chat. And thanks for sticking around for so long. That's a long time. The main thing here is getting rid of like the negative ratings. All right, so I liked Billy Davis. Minus two blocking. I don't really care about blocking the plate. I imagine that's what it's referring to. Speed, stealing, reaction. I like that one. Third base coach. An arm strength boost wouldn't be bad. I don't want to sacrifice all the accuracy there. David Pace would be a good option. Let's change up the music here. I love your channel, bro. This is my favorite series so far. I appreciate that, George. And I also appreciate uh, Brett becoming a member. Thank you all for the support here early on. <clears throat> oh, blocking is for the catcher stopping wild pitches. Okay. I can see that kind of being important. All right, there are a lot of uh, pretty similar good options here for the coaching. 
Blocking, speed, arm strength, reaction. <clears throat> They're all very similar here. And then we have to find a new farm director. Maybe we can get more plate vision here. David Sanchez, pretty good across the board. There's almost, there's like too many options, honestly. That's the toughest part. And there's nothing you can sort. All right, we're just going to go back to the top here. There was somebody who was pretty decent. David Sanchez will make the offer here. And maybe we lose on some of these. It's possible. But back to having to find the next manager. <clears throat> and we'll avoid the World Series champions here. Or uh, Roberts, obviously the World Series uh, winning manager last two years. Won it in the series here in year one. Madden lost it. We should bring in... A new young manager to help rebuild this team. Let's make an offer here at the top, close to the top. Anthony Meeks, velocity, power, K per nine. Sacrifice stealing a little bit. $5.3 million a year. All right. That's a lot of offers. I hope they get accepted. I might want to boost that one even a little bit. Let's make it six a year. All right. And back to the free agency here. Ah, John Gray, is it worth it for a couple years? Even if it's not, he would have value in a trade. So, and what are we going to do? Are we actually going to, like, need all this salary? I doubt it. We have, like, nobody to pay. So, why don't we... Front load a three-year offer. It's probably overpaying, but we can afford it when we have $128 million available. Yeah, we're pretty much the only team that's allowed to trade in this series because you can't trust the CPU with the moves they want to make. Like, if I put trading on now... You could see more trades like we saw, like Whit Merrifield being traded from the Royals to the Twins. Or the Royals trading Bobby Witt for Shane McClanahan. Just like weird moves. Let's make it a two-year offer. You might not like it. But I think everybody else we just let go. I want Michael Gibbons back, that's for sure. Crone, maybe, but I need to see what things look like later on. Alright, so... Jeff Bliss has accepted the Rockies offer as pitching coach. Oh no, Anthony Meeks has accepted the Royals offer as pitching coach. He accepted to be their pitching coach instead of being our manager? What? So we have at least one coach now. And now some of these are getting more competitive. Wow. Dave Roberts might be going to the Padres. Could you imagine? Joe Madden to the White Sox. Man.
Gotta find a new manager then. Louis Leonard? Speed reaction, clutch and clutch. I think that could work. Let's see if there's anybody else that has some better ratings. David Sanchez, we are trying to make him our farm director. His ratings aren't bad at all. The whole coaching system, honestly, in this game, this is really, like, outdated. This kind of a system. They were doing this in Madden 09. This year, we might actually see Madden pass up the show for, like, franchise quality. All right, three-year offer then to Louis Leonard. Try to make this work. From a feature standpoint, though, it could be a lot better than MLB The Show. Hard to compare gameplay right now, and the show is very far ahead when it comes to gameplay quality. But the show's, like, franchise foundation... Trade logic's terrible. The coaching system is old and outdated. Like, the show's franchise isn't as bulletproof as we pretend. <clears throat> oh, 2K is so much deeper. The show is the kiddie pool compared to where 2K is in franchise. Just strictly franchise features. Just trying to boost some offers here and fuel the coaching staff is all. Simmed a few days, nothing changed. Come on, just make a decision. Louis Leonard is the new manager. <clears throat> Billy Davis has accepted the Dodgers offer as first base coach. Got a new hitting coach, Horace Vickers. But hey, good start, I think, to the staff. Leonard... Vickers, Bliss, those are some quality boosts, I think. May have to boost uh, this offer. And then for Farm Director, I think I have to start over there, right? Oh no. David Sanchez, come on. Let's boost this. And so then it's just first base coach. Seth Delaney here the plus two blocking that was a really good point about the wild pitches maybe that helps out the catchers a little bit it's a good uh, defensive coach 
All right, Seth Delaney, first base coach. Gerald Cornell, third base coach. We just need a farm director. Tigers signed Cindergard to five-year deal. I didn't think it was free agency yet. It didn't. It said free agency in like ten days. Oh, free agency two. All right, all right. My bad. Not that we were probably making the best offers or anything. Well, Trevor Story is available. He's got a six-year offer though from Atlanta. I think it's just one player that got signed, and that was uh, Cindergard. But don't worry, we still got opportunities here. Uh, even for a short uh, time, is there a sign tab? I'm not sure. Is there? There's the transactions tab. Andrew Heaney is interesting, but is there a, a spot where it shows all the signed players? On the calendar? These are all call-ups and stuff. Alright, so here's all the transactions. A lot of renewables, re-signing Logan Webb. So Cindergard got the mega deal from Detroit. I'm okay missing out there. The Tigers rebuild was probably further along than ours. Okay, so we missed on one player. I've taken care of a lot of the 40-man. Um, here are the top players that are not on the 40-man roster. Um... But, like, players aren't eligible for the Rule 5 draft for a while. So, I think there... I thought you could sort by who's all eligible, but I guess not. But who would you actually have to worry about? Casey Golden. He's somebody that just got a nice upgrade, by the way. We would have to put him on the 40-man. And there's only 39 players right now, so we'll just add him to the 40 Derek Rodriguez, he's probably making the team. Toussaint's not even eligible. Alright, this is sorted by overall of who is not on the 40 man. Obviously, Geronimo is just drafted. You can take Greg Bird if you want. Ty Culbreth. I mean, the 40 man is basically who I want those players to be already. Wait, I just added Jacob Pearson to the 40 man. Did I not? Or did I add somebody else? Zach Veen shouldn't be eligible. He was just drafted two years ago. Why is he eligible? Obviously, then, you have to protect him on the 40-man. I thought you had to have so many professional years to be eligible. How does that work? I just spilled water all over myself. 
yeah, there were some uh, issues with the rosters, but overall, I don't think it'll be a huge detraction. Well, I'm glad I checked that. Thank you. Yeah, the game is really weird about the Rule 5 stuff, so let's just get this uh, set then. But then I have a lot of guys who aren't even signed. I could wait until then. Yeah, there are a handful of players that we could easily waive. Jordan Sheffield, Tommy Doyle, um, Tyler Kinley. We could end up waiving those players to make room. So, okay. Yeah, that tells you the best players that you could lose in the Rule 5 draft. Now, the Rule 5 draft is basically a draft that's in place to keep teams from just hoarding prospects and not giving them major league playing time so it i forget how many years it takes before you're eligible for it but you're basically drafting a player from another team's farm system to your active roster they have to stay on your active roster like all year or their rights revert back to the prior organization so you only select somebody in the draft if you plan on having them on your active roster all year so it's supposed to be five years if drafted at 18 or four years if drafted at 19 or older. And Zach Fien was drafted in 2020. He shouldn't be eligible, but the roster has that messed up. A team in our position is actually a team that might want to draft somebody in the Rule 5 draft. I'm trying to think of some of the more recent Rule 5 pickups that have actually been uh, impactful. I can't remember. I know the Twins lost somebody not long ago in the Rule 5. That's doing pretty good. Yeah, they did lose Akil Badu. And uh, he's done a pretty good job for the, uh, the Tigers. He was with the Twins organization, too. Garrett Whitlock, Nick Pavetta. Santander was a Rule 5 pick. I didn't know that. What team? There's a lot to do here. I'm trying to do it in a reasonable order. I'm just going to renew all these uh, deals. Okay, we have Sam Hilliard here. Yeah, he's 28. Nowhere near free agency, but he's a quality player. $3 million a year doesn't seem like a bad deal at all. If we make it shorter, he likes the deal even more. What do we think of a four-year deal here for Sam Hilliard? <clears throat> he's, he's eligible for arbitration, and if he keeps hitting the way he has, he could become a lot more expensive player. A lot more expensive player. I think four years allows us to bet on his upside pretty significantly. Three years max. Yeah, I think this is a really reasonable contract offer. Brendan Rogers. No, he doesn't want three years because his value is going to go way up. The two years works for me. This 
This will give us an idea of how much we truly have in free agency too. Josh Fuentes. Similar situation with playing time, service time. What about a two-year deal here? You think I had a room to go down? Yeah, these contracts are always weird. I suppose I did. He's looking for a lot less. Interesting. That is significantly less. All right, then. Rogers, we have to go with a fair amount of money here. Fuentes. Definitely like playing with him this last season. You can drop these quite significantly. <clears throat> yeah, right. He might be the good a good stopgap. Yeah, I probably shouldn't do too many uh, multi years because I might find somebody else I like more. But even then, I think like. If Fuentes became the backup and he was making 1.1 million, that's that's cool with me. Dom Nunez. Again, not a ton of experience here. We'll offer him uh, a one-year renewable. 500k. Jonathan Daza. <clears throat> one year backup outfielder. Some of the best plate vision on the team, but I never really got comfortable hitting with him for some reason. Some guys I just don't hit that well with, or it takes me a while to get comfortable. Tuki Toussaint, I really want to try making this work. I think you have to go one year at a time with him, with how uncertain his play can be. One year. Derek Rodriguez will give a one-year deal to... Yeah, it says looking for 670, but like the default comes in at 3.4. You think that's like, oh, what you got to go with. Not the case. And in terms of 670, I can go even lower than that. I can go to half mil on most of these major league players. Maybe it was Casey Golden I added to the 40 man, not Pearson. But Pearson probably also has to be added to the 40-man. And then for guys with no major league experience, like these minor league contracts are no big problem at all. Connor Joe has a little bit of experience though. So then you have to consider, do you want him at 460 or another backup somewhere at $70,000. I still want Connor Joe. He's good enough to be a backup or a guy at AAA you can call up in a pinch. Castellani's got some experience. He's not going to be making 60 grand. We should give Castellani more of a look at the Major League level this year. Stamets? I feel like we can probably let him go. He's 30. I don't think I want to pay him the half milli. The cheap renewables are super easy. You have to do a lot of these, though, is the only thing. T 
Taylor Motter, old super utility player. Probably let him go. Jose Briseño. He was kind of a emergency catcher signing for us. And we'll let him go. Oh yeah, pitchers with high walk per nine. We'll definitely make sure we do that this time around. Ben Bowden. He was quality last season. Still good for a couple years of renewable. I can really go this low? But he's going to be on the Major League roster. There's no way you can make $50,000 on a Major League roster. I did add Taylor Motter in the Twins franchise. Yep. I'm really confused by this contract. Why is it so low? He was on the active roster all season. This should be a 500 k deal. Played 59 games. Well, at least offer a hundred grand. Julian Fernandez, does he have major league experience? Why is this one so expensive? He has D potential, that's not going to work. Zach Veen, 60K. Jamison Hanna, 90K. Ryan Rollison, 80K. Some of those ratings are pretty decent. What do you think? Do we give half million to him? <clears throat> what setting do I have injuries on? A default for now. Um, I did play for a little while at one over default. I didn't think it was too bad. Some teams had it worse than others. Some of these players randomly want like half a million dollars in the minor leagues. B potential, 19 years old. Yeah, I think you have to have him signed at least. <clears throat> Anybody know anything about a Dale Amador? He looks pretty good. <clears throat> Plenty upside, yeah. He's a great fielder and out of the park. That's the kind of uh, analysis I'm looking for. I haven't played that game anywhere near enough, and it's been a while now since I've even tried it out. I played it so little. I 
All right, wrapping up. Basically, this is uh, like single A players. All right, now you have a B potential, Yohan Ibar. 24 years old, B potential lefty. But we'd have to give him like 600K. If I give prospects too many years, their interest would go down. And um, in some cases, I can't offer multi-year. Not worth it. It takes so long to tender all these contracts. We'll have a few roster spots to go mess around with later on, but that handles all of the renewables finally. Um, but we're not done because we have arbitration eligible players now. Those are just tenders. Is the food good? Yeah, the, the cashews are hitting the spot right now. All right, so the way it works is uh, let's find a player here who we're Zach Veen. So the entire goal, right, is to get to free agency and make the big money. Before that, though, you have the three renewable years and the three arbitration years. And the renewable years, you're basically making whatever the club wants you to make there. You're not going to be making big money unless you agree to like some big contract like Ronald Acuna did and Ozzy Albies and cash in early. Arbitration is where you get to start actually kind of making better value because the club will offer you a price, you and your agent come up with a price, and a neutral arbitrator will decide kind of based on the two offers, which is the most reasonable. <clears throat> so that's how it works. So you get three years of basically not making much, three years where you start to actually make something, and then free agency is where it opens up, obviously. All right, so arbitration here. For Garrett Hampson. How close is he to free agency? Three years until then. Honestly, three years taking him to free agency sounds like it'd be pretty safe. He has a potential. Should be just fine. I know. I think it would be more fair... Oh, and if it was like two renewable, two arbitration, then you have more players actually hitting free agency in their athletic prime and not at the end of it. Yeah, I'm kind of forced into that, Braven. Veen has to go on the 40 man or he's rule five eligible and I'm not risking that. So, <clears throat> I haven't done this part in a while. Ideal salary, 2.6 for arbitration. I should obviously be offering that. A three-year deal also wouldn't be terrible. If he'd be okay with less money there. Wow. Wow. Yeah, this would take him up to free agency right here. 
or you go to two years and you try to get him an extension before free agency if you want to what do you think two or three years they both make sense one would let you get uh a chance to sign him earlier <clears throat> all right chat's a little bit split here you're right you don't want to low ball players too much because if they're underpaid their morale's going down I'll have to pay him a little bit more to make a three-year deal work. And I want to keep him happy, too, so I'm not going to necessarily offer the minimum. So three years, nine million. Then Robert Stevenson. Uh, what's he looking for? 2.5 million. He was okay last year. He did have our highest strikeouts per nine on the team. I offered him arbitration. Ryan McMahon, he is a couple years away from free agency. He wants 4.1. Don't forget to offer arbitration to players you give offers to just in case they don't accept. That's a good point, Gio. I forgot about that. 27-year-old Ryan McMahon. I'm not against giving him the bigger deal running into his free agency years. Especially if it's just going to be like this much. <clears throat> this would be over seven a year. He's looking for 4.1 a year if it stays in just the arbitration years. Anyone you're looking at trading for? I don't know yet, Don. We haven't really gotten that far. And um, I'm mostly worried about free agency right now. Maybe it's early to make this signing. Let's make a two-year offer for Ryan McMahon. That would take care of the arbitration years. But I have to also offer arbitration. So what would be good with Hampson? Just offering like $2.3 million or he takes that multi-year deal? If you don't call up Veen right away, he stays renewable until then, even with him on 40. At that point, it would start the six-year free agency clock. Thank you, Caleb. The problem is that the game might automatically call him up and screw that up for me. Because I don't want to call him up right now. But... I ran into this problem a lot in the Twins franchise where they'd call up players I didn't want at that time. It will also offer McMahon arbitration at like $3.6 million. Austin Gomber. I don't know why it has him at AAA, but it does. <clears throat> I'm going to offer him arbitration. What's he looking for? 
2.6. Yeah, then you're only going to get the one year. Can we offer less to Gomber and try to get him for like 1.3? Trade Tuki for players similar caliber and potential? I, I consider it if it doesn't work out. It's, I'm going to be somewhat patient. I want it to work. If you call him back down, it will only add a few days. You can call him down without it really affecting anything. It'd probably burn up an option of his is all. <clears throat> Rymel Tapia. Yeah, you can offer a one year and and totally avoid arbitration as well. <clears throat> How much should I have offered Gomber in arbitration? Was that a pretty good one? I offered him only 1.3. It's a boost from last year, but not significant. Man, Freeland wants to be paid. Six million? Really? Previous salary, five. They were paying Freeland that much. What should we do with Freeland? Just offer him another, like, five million dollars in arbitration? That feels like it's... A lot, but they were already paying him that much. <clears throat> Can I offer him less than he already made? I can't offer him less than this, which is like 80%. I don't know yet with Freeland. I could let him go. Senzatella, 27 years old. I can't give him four point, I can't give him four million. That's too much. I also don't wanna like, I don't want to lowball the arbitration and then what the player wants is more fair and I end up paying him more anyway. <clears throat> I appreciate it, Caleb, the breakdown there on the, the call-ups and everything. Chichi Gonzalez, C potential, 2.7. Yeah, I, I can agree to that. Maybe even less. Or $2 million. Elias Diaz, 31 years old, his last year of arbitration. I liked hitting with him last year, so I'll offer the one-year deal. Carlos Estevez, 29 years old, pretty decent season last year. 2.7 though I might look to see what free agency has Chris Rustin just wasn't that good Greg Bird Daniel Bard he's okay I really don't think he was great last year I think the numbers are a little misleading he blew so many saves
I'm kind of okay with all that. <clears throat> I think I like where those offers are. But that gives us a better idea of where our budget is. Uh, well, they have to actually sign. We have uh, $28.9 million in pending. So we have around $70 million to think about with free agency now. So Story has a six-year offer from the Braves. Freddie Freeman has a lot of interest. Whoa, 7209. Braves are going to spend some money. They're not going to get all three. Did I not sign Tapia at all? I do like Tapia. It says no arbitration offer. I think I gave him just a simple contract offer, but I'll offer arbitration as well. Yeah. Um, and now maybe we actually start offering to some other players. So, thinking about starting pitching, that makes some sense. I saw Andrew Heaney earlier. I feel like he's somebody we could easily, uh, make a nice offer to. 30 years old, though? I thought he was a little bit younger. Here are all the starting pitchers, though. Scherzer, James Paxton, Corey Kluber... Justin Verlander. Heaney still might be one of the younger, intriguing options. And I don't really want to make sign anybody who has a qualified offer because I don't want to give up a draft pick. Is it our first draft pick? Oh, I saw what they were offering Javi Baez. It was only like seven a year. Uh, I don't think he'll take that. Buster Posey. I love Buster Posey. Michael Conforto. I had him in the Twins franchise. Really good corner outfielder. And it's a need for us again in this series. If I sign somebody who gets the qualified offer, am I giving up my first? Should be second or third. If it says qualify, they haven't received an offer. That's a little confusing. Okay, qualifying offer made. So some aren't qualified to get it. Some are, but haven't gotten it. And some have actually been made. Gotcha. Because the qualified offer is like $20 million. So it didn't make sense for some of these players, really. Uh, who do we want to try to bring in? The class is okay. I think we have to offer to Andrew Heaney. He's easily the best pitcher available that still has, you know, a few years to play. I'm not sure why it says I have zero stubs. Maybe I'm not logged in or something. Because I should have like 44,000 even though I've never spent them. <clears throat> Alright, so let's give an offer here to Andrew Heaney. Maybe we give him a player option. Just try to make this as intriguing for him as possible. To potentially be our ace. Ratings overall are decent. The home run per nine is a little bit concerning, but we can't be completely picky and he'd be the highest rated player on the team. Allowed 26 home runs last season. 1.2 home run per nine. We can deal with that. He gets strikeouts though. Yep. Andrew Heaney might be a bit of an overpay, but what are we going to do?
chance to bring back story no qualifying offer no we're gonna let him probably go back to atlanta <clears throat> what about a three-year player with a pl a three-year deal with a player option well we have to also beat their offer is the problem well that does it easily so we could probably even bring down the offer a little bit from there of course it just did that problem is that he doesn't have a lot of interest here what's 67.6 divided by 4 17 a year great Still a stronger offer. For other pitchers, I mean, the issue is that Heaney is basically younger than all the other options. Carlos Martinez doesn't get a lot of strikeouts, though. Negative war player last two years. Danny Duffy, 33 years old. Michael Waka, Di Sclafani. Yeah, I mean, with Cindergard gone, there really isn't an option better than Heaney to me. So, beyond those options, I guess um, we could try to sign a couple relievers as well. 39 years old. A lot of older uh, options here. Oh, Brad Hand has a lot of offers. Osuna has a lot of offers. Melanson has none. All right, let's go to the outfielders. <clears throat> You're right. We're not going to out pitch our division. We don't have the money to do it, and we don't have the talent right now. We just got to put runs on the board, honestly. It's the only thing we can do at this point. So you have a few corner outfield options here, and this would give us kind of more flexibility to have Hampson go to the infield. So can I pull up the depth chart from here? So basically here, imagine you have McMahon playing first base, Rogers at short, Hampson at second, Fuentes at third. That puts Hilliard in the outfield with Charlie Blackman, and then maybe we sign somebody who plays in left. It's kind of the plan with that. If I get Trevor May, will you collab with him on YouTube? He doesn't have any clue who I am. So we have some options here. There's McCutcheon, Tommy Pham. McCutcheon's 35, Pham 34. Um, Jake Marisnik would be an option. I know some of these aren't the most exciting. Why is Mark Canna a 70? That's partially regression, right? But that is so low for Canna. Appreciate the super chat though, Don. <clears throat> Conforto. Do we want to rebuild the same way I did in the Twins franchise? Same players? Avisail Garcia would be interesting. He's got 65 power there. Conforto hasn't beat. Mazzara. Nelson Cruz, 71 overall. What happened? Have to play in the field here in the National League, though. Yeah, Mazzara has some pop as well in his bat. 26 years old. 
a lot more upside for him to play multiple years. And an accurate throwing arm. Why is Cruz down to a 71? Just regression. He's in his 40s. And Michael Taylor is an option as well. <clears throat> I would change Heaney's role to ace and lower the offer. Should still work and give McCutcheon a two-year club option and sign Baez for super cheap. Yeah, I kind of like the sound of that. <clears throat> and Heaney would be the ace. So, what was my offer? 49.5? Ace. With a player option. Three years. Not that we really need to save the money. But, you can save a little bit. And the ace should be somewhat valuable in getting him to accept. Yeah, Mazzara is still young. <clears throat> I know he's not as good as Conforto, but part of me is like, do I want to try rebuilding with one of the exact same players that I used in my rebuild previously? I know it's kind of silly, but it's like, I want the franchise to not just be me trying to redo the Twins franchise. Conforto at 29 would still be a really solid signing if I wanted to bring him in. Mazzara, though, 26 years old. Maybe he gets better in some areas. He is a little bit better fielder. Would be cheaper, too. <clears throat> Let's give an offer to Nomar Mazzara. What is it going to take? I don't want to promise every day because he could potentially end up being replaced. Crone isn't on the team anymore. I didn't sign him back or try to because I thought we could have McMahon move to first base and then he'd just, just be a backup and I don't think he'd like that role on the team. <clears throat> so then we have uh, Javi Baez... Now, if we sign Baez, obviously then we don't have Rodgers playing uh, shortstop every day if we try to bring him in. Baez, 29, just like Trevor Story. But Baez, we could probably get for a much cheaper, much smaller contract. And only seven less overall. Really good defense. I think we have to make a, an offer here. Baez can play a lot of positions. Ooh, he could play center? Ooh, I didn't know he could. That would be intriguing. Because then it just becomes, you know, Hilliard and uh, Mazzara kind of figure it out. We want to add some power to this lineup though, and this is going to be like the best way we can do it right now. Player option and role affects the interest a lot. Yeah, I should uh, pay attention to that. Thank you, 
the prayer for your super chat contribution. How's it going, man? Uh, Baez doesn't fit this roster building strategy. Not completely. But he's also not getting paid potentially, you know, even $10 million. Uh, uh. Does it totally fit? No. But we want to spend this money. And we could make it work with him. It's different signing him compared to Trevor Story for 160 million. You know. So I'm probably going to have to. Ooh, he likes less years. Three years for Javi Baez being in a star. Like. I can't promise he's going to be a star. He might have a bad year. <clears throat> uh, star role means hitting in the top of the order. Oh, yeah, he probably would if we signed him. So if we don't sign Baez or attempt to, like, where what are we doing with the money this year? There's not really much. And we make it like a short deal. He's got a chance to get back on the market eventually. And maybe we trade him if it doesn't exactly work out. I don't know. I don't think it's totally unreasonable to try and sign him, honestly. If other teams don't really want him that bad... Then why not? Give him a player option here. Just three years. <clears throat> yeah, kind of a short prove it deal. That's the way I look at it. And he's an inconsistent player who just hit 216 and 22 home runs. I mean, he's not having the best season, and he played all year long, 151 games. He wasn't even a one-war player. <clears throat> Wait, was the qualifying offer made to him? It has that Q in the uh, parentheses. I don't think the qualifying offer was made to, to Baez. Because they're trying to sign him for 7 a year. He would have just taken the qualified offer at 20. Yeah, I think this is the kind of deal that honestly makes sense for both sides. I think I'm actually ready to sim a little bit. See where the market goes. <clears throat> he might not be worth the money, but I'm not the actual billionaire that owns this team. I don't even know who it would be. Like, if I don't spend money, it doesn't benefit me. I don't have a, a yacht to buy or anything. Not quite. We sim a day, we sim two days. We have a new farm director. Play Baez at second, Hampson stays outfield. We have a lot of options, honestly. Baez fielding stats would help a lot. I think so too. We don't really have an elite fielder on this team. Wow, the Braves got Kershaw for $209 million. That's a lot of money. But are they going to be able to also get Story, bring him back to Atlanta after we traded him there? Freddie Freeman's going to the Nationals. So, he'll face the Braves. And that's all that's happened here. Um, other signings. So, the Cubs ended up keeping Chris Bryant under $10 million a year on a five-year contract. That's a bit surprising. 
Hey, Kane, what kind of microphone you use? This is a Blue Yeti. These will run you about 120 bucks, I think. Really solid USB mic. I should upgrade to a, another mic, and I might sometime soon, but it gets the job done. There is a microphone I've had my eye on. Okay, the deadline is November 20th here on the uh, Rule 5 deal. Oh, story re-signed? There it is. There it is. I'm glad that worked out for them where I traded him somewhere. Oh, we got Andrew Heaney. Why doesn't the game tell you when stuff works? Like, Franchise has some problems in the show. They didn't even give me a notification that I signed Heaney. What happened to those previous games where it would show him in his new uniform with the contract? They showed me one player, and then the rest I read through text? So we got Andrew Heaney. There we go. Story stays in Atlanta replacing Freddie Freeman. It only shows the top stars. I understand that there would be so many, but they should show anybody that I offered to. I think. And then the stars for other teams. <clears throat> Alright, we have to work on our 40 man then. Jordan Sheffield, we remove, we remove Tommy Doyle. I don't think he's even eligible. Yeah. Um, Tyler Kinley, we're going to remove. And then obviously we need to add Veen, probably Brandon Gold as well. And then I wouldn't really be worried about anything. Thank you for all the patience today. I know I'm probably very, uh, um, all over the place and don't know as much of what I'm doing in MLB compared to Madden where I've done hundreds of off seasons, whereas in MLB I've done like four. Am I going to do more CPU versus CPU games like in game seven of the World Series? Yeah, when it makes sense, I like doing that. I'll try to keep a couple spots for the Rule 5 draft. I actually think that that's kind of one of the, the hidden spots for us to maybe get better. I'll make sure we have a spot or two open. All right, so Brandon Gold's on the... Uh, the roster here now now I don't think I'm worried about making sure they're uh, on the 40 man Panthers a good Madden 22 rebuild team definitely I think the Panthers are one of the best teams thank you Colton for the super chat um Panthers have that blend of like fun talent to play with right away but you still have to rebuild them and you might want a new quarterback like you get DJ Moore, CMC, Jeremy Chin, Derek Brown, JC Horn right away. But you always have room for uh, another playmaker on offense. Do you want Darnold? There's still work to do with the defense. They're a great team for franchise. <clears throat> Will you live stream spring training games? I plan on it. <clears throat> I want to get a Madden 20 uh, episode up here probably Monday-ish. I know I've been a little bit behind on that. Alright, so how many are on the 40 man now? Uh, 40. 40. 40-man roster has 40 players at the moment. That's temporary. We're going to remove Daniel Bard. And Jose Briseño. 
and Chris Rustin. And Eric Stamets. That's enough. That's more room than we probably need. Now we have Andrew Heaney, though. I'm excited about Heaney joining the team. He's a solid pitcher and should give us a boost. Best player on the team right now, apparently. They're not actually under contract, Bard and Russin. Like, I had the chance to offer them a contract. I'm not, but they're still considered to be on my 40 man. Kind of weird, but um, I had to waive them so I have room. All right, how's the battle for Baez going? We're winning. Um, we still had an offer out for uh, Mazzara. We're winning that. Brad Hand to the Braves. They still had money to pay a closer $15 million a season. Carlos Correa to the Diamondbacks. Whoa. We're going to face him now. Six years. 102. Kirby Yates to the A's. Any others? It's time you pick the Falcons from Madden 22. They're a great franchise team as well. That team's a bit of a mess. Brad Hand, James Paxton to the Nationals. Trying to not miss anything there. Scherzer is still available. But I don't think that long term he's going to be part of whatever team we have that could become a winner. So, If we were a middle of the road team, we'd have like 500 offers out there. But because we're this low doesn't make as much sense Culberson potentially kind of like that Chris Owings utility player although Owings is even more um, versatile I just want to know if I'm going to get Tavi Baez Big signing there for the Tigers, getting Nolan Hoffman on a $70,000 contract. All right, rule five drafts. I've already set the 40, man. Pick the Vikings for Madden 22 so you can cut Cousins. Deal with all that dead cap space. They've played themselves into a situation where they're, they're forced to live this contract out, basically. When is the Rule 5 draft? Let me save the file quick. Yeah, we're going to work on the bullpen. That's kind of what the next stage is going to be about. <clears throat> Rule 5 is later, after winter meetings. Okay, so we're not even close. Apparently, I have too many players. I find that hard to believe. Maybe I signed too many uh, renewable contracts when I have draft picks coming in. I might be eating a little bit of dead money here. Older players with really low dev just getting cut. I 
That gives us a little bit of room. <clears throat> Cousins, probably one of the better Vikings quarterbacks. Yes, that's also true. It's true that Cousins has been mostly disappointing, but he's also been uh, better than 90% of the other guys. That's how bad it's been. Cousins had uh, some has had really good moments over the last two years, but he doesn't put in a complete season and has games where he really lets the team down. <clears throat> if he could remove those games and just replace them with other performances he's capable of having, all of a sudden he becomes closer to a Matt Stafford caliber quarterback, but he's not. Getting more competitive? Good luck competing. Yes! Javi Baez, welcome to Colorado. Our two big signings. We don't break the bank. We go get Andrew Heaney. Javi Baez helps us replace Trevor Story. I like that move. How much do you wish they kept Teddy? At the time, well, uh, because of the injury. Like, I was always a big Teddy fan, and then the injury happened, and then you understand why they did what they did with Bradford and everybody else. Um, but Teddy wasn't really very good last year. He's probably just going to be kind of a bridge quarterback now, a solid backup. If you have an elite defense and good playmakers... He might be good enough to help you get into the playoffs, but it's going to take a very complete team. <clears throat> I appreciate it, Franz. Yeah, the price, too, is just like, you can't beat it. All right, so we should now be... Uh, Looking for probably relief pitching help. Not trying to spend a ton of money here, but the main thing is, can I find anybody who has like multi-year upside? It's all like 33 year old pitchers. So trying to find pitchers who are coming off a decent season. How's the roster look right now? How many relief pitchers do I have at the major league level? I have four. Oberg, Stevenson, Givens, and Bowden. Yeah, we need some more relief pitchers. <clears throat> what about Mazzara? I forgot about Mazzara. I imagine we still have the best offer. We have the only offer. So he's playing it patiently then. You can usually get some relievers in the rule five. I imagine we could. Should probably try to add at least one right now. Maybe Darren O'Day. Just to have somebody on the team. I want to offer to like two. Steve C. Shack. Yeah, I, I might consider him. He's not allowing a lot of home runs. Same with Shane Green. couple offers out there <clears throat> how much is Danny Duffy looking to be a lefty out of the bullpen if I made him a bullpen pitcher 
we'd have to offer like 4.7 for him to like that to make him part of the rotation half million less I don't think Duffy would be the worst addition but adding Heaney um, if we keep Gray Marquez and then we have like Chi Chi Gonzalez. I mean, it's not the best group, obviously, but we can probably figure something out. And I'm okay trying to bring back Kyle Freeland. Man, these strikeout numbers are just so low, though. What would it take? Ideal salary, 30K. Really? I don't think so. Yeah, I, we're just not going to bring back Freeland. I really like Yusei Kikuchi in real life. 72 overall is so low. Man. I'd love to bring him in. But what would it take? See, I, I am not going to be paying $16 million. I might sign him in spring training. I'll have to remember you say Kikuchi. I really like him. I'm not signing Matt Shoemaker, by the way. If you're a Twins fan, you might know why. <clears throat> yeah, these contract demands in free agency right now are ridiculous. Nomar Mazzara has accepted the Athletics offer of 3.9 over one years. We just got outbid by less money and less years. Three years, $15 million. How do I compete with that? That's what happens when you lose 109 games. Think about it though from this perspective. Nomar Mazzara losing with the Rangers, losing with the Tigers, the Athletics offer an opportunity to win. You'll just have to take like a 22% pay cut on a per year basis, but you get to reset your market after a year. What would be better? Guaranteed $5 million for three years or the 3.9 on a team that might boost your value more? I kind of understand it, but I also understand that 15 million guaranteed is 15 million guaranteed. Billy Bean got it done. We lost to Moneyball again. I like Cole Calhoun. If you want some power, Adam Duvall would also be a really good option. Mitch Haniger is available? Some of these players, I'm like, why aren't you 10 overall better? Adam Duvall. He could crush some homers here. Plays a lot of positions too. This would just be kind of the CJ Crone signing of the year. Yeah, regression is hitting a lot of these players pretty bad. <clears throat> the, the rosters, um, I got them whenever the updates were made. So I don't know where like some of these players were at the beginning. Duval crushes. I signed him. Good bench guy too. Yeah, I don't think you can really go wrong here with uh, Duval, unless you just want to get somebody younger. But um, even then, kind of tough. Especially with comparable power. I mean, you could go Gregory Polanco, but he's really only going to want to be played against righties. Not on the same level. I think Ahmed Rosario would be way, way too tough to trade for. He's got high potential.
Tyler Naquin will not be a 72 overall in real life by the end of the year. Excels at pinch hitting. That's what I'm talking about. Chris Owings, still if we want that super utility player. Um, if you have any other ideas of other utility players like him, let me know. But I think I'll give an offer to Adam Duvall. Just a one-year deal. Yeah, it's a lot of money, but it's for one year. And the money's either going to go to a player or disappear into thin air. Mm-mm. <clears throat> Trade for Brandon Nimmo. I do like Nimmo. He'd be a good fit. <clears throat> Jerks and Profar. I haven't seen him available. Willie Calhoun. 27 years old. Left field and second base. That's really specific stuff. I feel like his game would basically be like Rymel Tapia. 26 speed is low. Yeah, I'll just stick with Tapia. Uh, I just won the MVP with Willie Calhoun. How far into franchise are you? Like, I think he's a pretty good player. The ratings just don't think... I don't like where they're at right now in the game. Where was Steven Duggar listed? Should be in the outfield. Outfield only in this game. <clears throat> Alright, let's sim a little bit more. Scherzer's going to the O's. <laughs> Max Scherzer. That's a, a lot lower salary than I would have expected. Welcome to the month of December, everybody. Winter meetings coming up. Osuna to the Marlins. How are my free agency offers going here? I don't have any pending offers. We might have a couple deals done it didn't tell me about. Astros got Doolittle. Marlins get Eduardo Escobar. Buster Posey to the Cardinals. Interesting. Cesar Hernandez to the Diamondbacks. <clears throat> Your mean Mercedes to the Giants. Okay. Yancy Almonte to the Mariners. We didn't bring him back, obviously. Kyle Higashioka to the Marlins. Lefty masher catcher. <clears throat> we got Duvall. We did get Adam Duvall. Okay. Do we get any of the relievers, though? Obviously, El Garcia to the Cubs. Do we miss out on all the relievers? If so, we're not in good shape there. We got Darren O'Day. Okay, we got Pedro. Is it Strop? <clears throat> the Rule 5 draft might actually be important. Cards got Barnhart and Posey, so they're going to be loaded at catcher then. <clears throat> Wait, did they have Ben Bowden there as MLB? It did, okay. And we got Oberg this year. <clears throat> I believe in real life, he's dealt with some career-threatening uh, blood clot issues. So uh, his career is in jeopardy in real life. I gave him an injury in the very beginning to basically wipe out his 2021 season, but he'll get to play for us this year. <clears throat> Strope. Gotcha. Strope. Rule 
Rule 5 draft in four days. Let's do it. Let me save quick. I hope we can actually find a couple players. I think like a reliever or two would make a ton of sense for us or a utility player. So how do I participate? Rule 5 draft. Here we go. We have 35 players on the 40 man. There aren't five rounds, I don't think. I think there are two rounds, right? Go to draft. We have the first pick of the rule five draft. Here we go. Now, anybody we draft here goes to the active roster for the entire season or they are reverted back to their original club. Ooh, B79, Sir Anthony Dominguez. I heard a bunch of you talking about him in the comments earlier. I think he's got to easily be someone to pick up here. What's the story with him being available here, though? It seems like he should be on their roster. Wow, Chad De La Guerra would be another really good option. How many players can I potentially take in the Rule 5? And then Yanni Chirinos. 27 B potential 79 that walk per nine is looking pretty good and he throws a sinker I mean this seems like a slam dunk why isn't why wasn't he on their 40 I think you have to go Yanni Chirinos here. Now, Nick Birdie just got drafted. Here are all the Rule 5 pickups here. The potential looks bugged. I don't think any of those are right. Oh wow, there's a lot of rule five rounds. There's no way there's actually this many rounds. You're telling me a team could potentially build an entire team out of the rule five draft? Why does this sound like a YouTube concept? There's potentially 40 picks in the rule five. It goes until no one selects anymore. Wow. So you're telling me if I got bored one day and wanted to do a rebuild, a Rule 5 rebuild, it's technically doable. <laughs> wow. So they do it until there's a round where no one selects. A Rule 5 rebuild. Man, don't even give me ideas like that. I'm gonna I'm have to write that down. I'm too old to trust my memory. Rule five rebuild. All right. File that one away. <clears throat> Sir Anthony Dominguez. Walk per nine is a little bit of a concern, but uh, when there's so many strengths potentially here, you just make it happen. A lot of players actually being selected here in the rule five. 
Couple rule five pickups here at pitcher plus uh, Andrew Heaney. All right. <clears throat> I don't think we have a lot of other possibilities here. I think that, and remember, like they have to stay on the active roster all year. There's no hiding them. You can hide them on the bench. That's it. But roster spots are valuable. Utility player is still up for grabs if there is someone here that fits. Maybe. Low 70s, high 60s is going to be essential here. I'm talking infield and outfield, all right? Valera, center field. Everyone's screaming about Valera in the comments. A potential. All the outfield spots. My only issue there is I like the outfielders we have. Plus, we need to eventually have room for David Geronimo and Zach Veen. And Valera is strictly an outfielder. I think it'd kind of be a short-sighted move. I don't think you can trade Rule 5 pickups, can you? That seems like it would be uh, something they explicitly not want you to do. Man, Valera's really interesting though. What team is he with? <clears throat> you can trade rule five. That's wild. Yeah, it would be a little unrealistic here with an eight potential player. I feel like the pitchers I got might even be too good for rule five pickups. This is a Veen situation. You know, you're right. 68 A potential really shouldn't be available. Shouldn't have to be on the 40 man right now. But for whatever reason in this roster, they're rule five eligible. I probably won't game the system on that one then. It'd be like if we had Zach Veen available. All right. Ooh. Just a little less proven than Owings is all. You'd want him for his defense and speed, not really his hitting. Owings was an okay hitter last season. I might just look to see the veteran free agent market then and take care of everything else. Jose Peraza would be an option. B potential 27. That's good vision and defense. We like him better than Owings. Contact against lefties is pretty nice. You can pretty much play everything. <clears throat> All right, Jose Peraza. We will select him in the rule five. Three Rule 5 pickups. I'm not sure I ever picked somebody up in the Rule 5 in my Twins franchise. We're skipping our selection this turn. And it's over. They have to remain on the 25-man roster. They didn't update that to be 26. Um, or they can be claimed. They also don't have to be claimed. Which MLB and NFL team would I want to coach? Um, I'd want to coach or be the manager of the Padres. 
because I would just watch baseball in 70 degree weather all summer watching a really fun young team that doesn't need my input. And then for NFL, um, I would want to coach the Saints. Because with Taysom Hill and Jameis Winston, I could run like a YouTube offense with that team. It'd be an easier transition for me. <clears throat> the Rule 5 rebuild, though, that would be hilarious. All right, arbitration hearings are in two months. How many are on the roster now? 29, I'll have to make one cut at some point. That's fine. Is there any reason I shouldn't just like sim to the arbitration hearings now? <clears throat> Yeah, I'll fill the roster. I don't think it all has to be done now. Earlier, I was going to say I got I cut myself off with something. I got sidetracked, but I, I thought Zach Granke would be an interesting fit for our ballpark in particular. Obviously, like, it'd just be a one-year deal. And we're trying to think more multi-year mindset right now. So doesn't make a lot of sense. Again, if we were average, like Granky, I'd really want him probably. Hey, Kane just got back from a long camping trip and tuned in. What did I miss? Caught the end of the rule five. So there weren't a lot of great players available, but we did manage to bring in Andrew Heaney as the main starting pitcher addition. He immediately became the best uh, overall player on the team. And then we also were able to get Javi Baez on a really nice bargain contract that gave him a player option and the flexibility to test free agency again in a couple of years if he wants to. Didn't break the bank. So Baez and Heaney are the big moves for us. We also... Um, by the way, <laughs> now the two best players on the team. But Rule 5 pickups were pretty big for us, helping out the pitching. We also signed Adam Duvall. Last year, they brought in CJ Crone to just hit home runs for a season. And this year, we're going to do that with Duvall. He can play more positions. Also brought in Darren O'Day. Pedro Strope. Yeah, I like what we've done today. This is exactly what I wanted to do. Happy New Year, by the way. We're into the month of January. I suppose I could try to sign. I feel like this is just stuff I have to keep going in and out of menus to do. And the same players are going to be available. So I might as well just take the time to be more focused on it later on and sign those double A players. I mean, is there any reason I shouldn't do that? The stream's kind of running a bit long because I took forever in the beginning to do stuff. Does the show have XP sliders? No. Just uh, typical baseball sliders here. Let's save. The goal should be to field a competitive team while still being a few years away. Feels like you did that. I agree. A team that should be better and the players that we added could still potentially help us out in a few years
Uh, can't play class A. It's just double A and triple A. No class A, no rookie ball. I don't think I'll sign a closer. I think I'll have Michael Givens basically be the closer this year. I feel like he could do it really well. <clears throat> In Texans franchise, which was the most unrealistic move? Trading up from 14 to 1 to get Rosemond or keeping the four intact, keeping the front four intact, or trading for Becton? Um, getting up from 14 to 1 is a bit out there because you'd have to give up so much in real life to pull it off. The Becton trade, like any major non-quarterback trade, there's a way you could justify it. Like there's a lot of surprising trades like that that happen. I mean, the uh, the Laramie Tunsil trade was a, a one that you wouldn't have predicted. A lot of trades happen that you're like, well, if anyone suggested that, they'd be deemed unrealistic. Leave him at as a relief pitcher in the closing pitcher spot and improves his morale and overall cereal. Hmm. Well, at any rate, I want him to be the closer. Still some decent players out there. Donovan Solano. That's a ton of quirks. Oh yeah, we got Javi Baez. There was a little debate over the realism of it, but he was being lowballed. Only had interest from the Cubs. So he gets a prove it deal here. It's not even like a massive deal. It's three years with a player option, so it's basically a two-year deal. Where he'll make like $7 million and try to reset his market after a year where he wasn't even a one-war player, hit 216, 22 home runs. I mean, not a superstar performance, so he didn't get paid like a superstar. Now he's got to prove it outside of the Cubs. Yeah, I mean, I, I like Solano. It just doesn't make sense with where the roster is at right now. I was just curious. My favorite pitcher of all time would be Johan Santana. Yeah, Baez might not be great in the simulating. I mean, he wasn't last year in the simulating. But, uh... That's okay. We didn't pay him $30 million. Favorite twin of all time, not including Santana, that'd be Tori Hunter. Where's Jose Peraza? Might not list him because of, uh... Contract arbitration. So he's not technically... Oh, there he is. It does list him. Rule 5 pickup. Super utility. Just replacing the Chris Owings role. Anybody gets hurt, he can step in. Need someone to run late in the game. He's got 68 speed. <clears throat> yes, I am uh, a Minnesota fan. As frustrating as that can be at times. I had to move away just to give myself some space. Can't wait to see David Geronimo. 
Probably start them off, well, 73 overall. They like to put in these early ETA players, I think, to keep some more of the casual players interested in franchise because you just don't see players being drafted and joining the majors within a year. Even the best don't do that. <clears throat> Any player I could potentially trade next year? Um, yeah, I mean... Depending on what happens with Marquez, he'd be an option. Um, John Gray. I don't think it's super likely, but there are a few positives. Potentials. <clears throat> How early was he up? Benintendi. <clears throat> I feel like Mullins should have been an all-star, at least on the bench. He's been really good this year. <clears throat> he and Mancini. Mount Castle hasn't been that bad. The O's still got some work to do, but they, they got some players, too. Yeah, Strasburg came up really quick. But those are super rare uh, situations. All right, let's get to arbitration. Jose Peraza is going to make 1.1 million. Austin Gomber, the arbitration panel went with him. I think I offered 1.3. He was able to squeeze out an extra 35 grand. Not bad deal. I was pretty close though. Um, we won arbitration for Stevenson, two million dollars. McCutcheon to the Orioles with Miguel Rojas and Justin Verlander. Orioles signing everybody. They got Scherzer too, didn't they? <clears throat> yeah, Harper was always expected to be a quick riser. How much did he even play in the minor leagues or rookie ball? I'm trying to find out on baseball reference. Did he even play in the minors at all? Or was it just spring and then he's up? So I'm not seeing any rookie ball stats or anything. Athletics get Zach Grinky. Corey Kluber to the cards. So I'll have to make some more signings here for the minor league system. Just kind of filling out those rosters. Not major signings. I wanted to see all of our arbitration cases. Well, I really want to make sure we have a lot of speed on this team. And when I looked at this roster, I'm like, well, I kind of already see the direction they're trying to go in. There is a fair amount of speed on the team. Most of it's above average, not necessarily elite level speed. But there is a lot of speed on this roster. Dansby Swanson just got 709. Where are they playing him? They got story. Byron Buxton lost his arbitration, but was awarded $5 million. Blue Jays. I want to take a look at their payroll. That lineup, especially with Springer being back, is just so good. 
But I know that, like, obviously Vlad and Bichette, those guys haven't played long, so they're not making big money. Simeon. Marcus Simeon's got to be one of their highest paid players, right? Buxton would be amazing in Coors. He is the dream player in Coors. I, for one, think they should stream the arbitration hearings on Twitch. That would be entertaining. Have you thought of Tim LaCastro? I just don't know if he's a good enough hitter. There are a few guys where it's like their speed is so good, but like getting on base can be a bit of a challenge. <clears throat> he did well against us, though, in the last game of the, the season. That's for sure. I'm not going to play any spring today. <clears throat> Jake Fraley is a good speed guy. Jake Fraley is a good power guy. He just got done hitting like all those home runs. I forget how many it was and how many days, but it seemed like he was going yard every other day for the Mariners. Yeah, Billy Hamilton has speed. He's another guy where it's like, can you get him on base? Because once he can, he's basically on third base. He had a couple really good games earlier this year in real life. One against the Twins, where I think he had uh, like four stolen bases. It was a ridiculous game. I wish you could choose to focus a certain player's development in specific areas. They allow you to do that through training, but I can't show you here. You can choose how you want players to be developing. Oh yeah, I really want to see Adalberto Mondesi stay healthy. He's got... The, the full skill set to be a, a star player on that team. Yes, we won the arbitration hearing. I think that might be all of them. The Nationals arbitration is expensive. 10 million for Juan Soto, 13 for Trey Turner. Here's a look at the depth chart right now. So the, the starting rotation gives us Heaney, Marquez, John Gray, and then um, I'm not sure. Yeah, you have to put Yanni Chirinos in there too. So imagine that's Yanni Chirinos instead of Derek Rodriguez. That would give us, you know, four that you feel at least okay about. Which is a lot better than we had last year. They, they list Chirinos here in the bullpen, but that won't be the case. Sir Anthony Dominguez joins the team. We have Robert Stevenson, Scott Oberg, Michael Givens. Might have to do a couple more things with relief pitchers. Oh, no. We have uh, Darren O'Day. Um, with Tuki Toussaint, we probably just keep him in the minors this year. For most of the year. And try to see if he develops at all. Working on those weaknesses. That walk per nine has to get better. Or he's going to only be a reliever. And even then, would he be a good reliever? But I think here with this roster, we move McMahon to first base this season. Hampson comes into second base. Rogers stays at short. Fuentes at third. We can make Javi Baez the everyday center fielder. That might sound ridiculous. But it is an option. We could also play Baez at short, Rogers at second, Hampson in center. The only thing is Hampson's arm isn't very strong, so I don't necessarily want to keep him in the outfield. But if we play him in center, I think we can hide his arm a bit better and take advantage of that speed. And then Charlie Blackman in right. And then in left field, I think you platoon Hilliard, Duvall, Tapia... 
And then Jose Peraza is kind of your super utility off the bench. <clears throat> I like uh, that progress. Yeah, maybe Baez, we just keep him at short, have his defense there, and Hampson just plays in center. I mean, it'd basically be the same. Not much would change there. I feel like that was pretty successful, though. I know we weren't going to make the biggest moves, but trying to set us up to be good in a few years. Making pretty reasonable signings along the way. Could Rodgers play second? Yeah, that would kind of be the, the, the new plan. Rodgers just goes to second. McMahon to first. Baez at short. Hampson stays in center. Charlie Blackman. And then on in left field, depending on who's playing well, you go Duvall, Hilliard, Tapia. <clears throat> I'd love for Hilliard to be an everyday player. And if I feel like one of these younger players is being held back from getting important playing time, Hilliard's 28, so it's not like he's getting a ton better necessarily. But that's where a Charlie Blackman trade would finally make sense to me. If it was like, we're keeping Hilliard on the bench, is it worth it? Probably not. So we're getting closer to that point perhaps where Charlie Blackman becomes expendable. <clears throat> so yeah that is where we're at here after the first off season of the series how has his hitting regressed he lost like three overall points looks like uh here's all the the regression contact is untouched but less power especially against lefties um some of these you don't worry about too much. Still going to be roughly the same player, maybe a little less power upside. I don't think I would get much for Blackman. The main thing would be just allowing another player to play his spot, not necessarily trying to get the best player in return. And then if we project this out... Wow, they like David Geronimo getting to an 87 here. Zach Veen. Uh, Brendan Rodgers to 85. Not bad. Team salaries, $110 million. Is that where we're at right now? You know, I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with that. We managed to spend some money without spending it recklessly. We're still going to have a payroll far below other teams. Not bad. I'm going to sign a few more players to fill out the minor leagues, so that's only going to be a couple million dollars at most. Yeah, Baez for an absolute bargain. This third year, by the way, that's uh, an option year. So I I think of it more like a two-year deal. I don't know why he'd want to pick that up unless he was putting up Chris Davis numbers or something. But I tried to make an offer there. Like, the shorter I made the deal, the more his interest went up. And then I made it a player option. I'm just like, here, come to Colorado, reset your market for two years. That's all we're asking. And you gotta remember too, I think the performance plays a part in their contract demands because he's coming off a year where quite frankly, he wasn't great. He hit 216, hit 22 home runs and he played 151 games. It was a, a decent season, but not a big money season. That's for sure. So I just want to see him hit some bombs and <clears throat> cash in in a couple of years. <clears throat> uh, 
All right, everybody. I think that's going to do it for me today off stream. Later on, I'm going to just fill out the roster and then next time we'll be on to spring training. Probably going to do some streaming there so I can get through more games, some player lock games to get a look at different players. And then year two is around the corner. I know, I really want to make sure Duval gets some playing time too. So uh, spring, the spring is going to be really important, I think, for figuring out this roster and figuring out if Charlie Blackman is actually expendable. So that's it for today, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the off season. I thought it went really well. Leave your thoughts in the comments or on the edited video if you want when I get that posted here in a couple days. Appreciate you all being here and having some fun. Appreciate all the new members, all the super chats, and just everybody for hanging out and helping me and definitely uh, letting me know when I miss stuff. There's a lot of that here in MLB. I overlook stuff all the time. Like almost allowing our top prospect to go in the 40 uh, or the Rule 5 draft. Appreciate it, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I will catch you all next time. Have a great day, everybody.